motherfuckers what's happening hell raises and harlots hey there all my bad bitches and unproblematic niggas up down and all around the internet it is i the one the only kimber shan don't call me kim ho it's okay to be extra because i tell it like it is and welcome to a quickie with kimber shan let's just go ahead and jump right into facts foolery and fuck up you uncultured swine so the first story that i want to discuss today is a story coming out of chicago i'm sure you've all heard about it by now alicia hood and her 14 year old son in the shooting at the hot dog stand so basically what happened was alicia was inside ordering some food her son was outside in the car her and a man got into an argument altercation while she was in line ordering her food and the man did get very irate they were arguing They were arguing and he threatened to knock her ass out if she says one more word to him. And this is all captured on video. I'm sure if you type in shooting Chicago, Carlisha Hood, you'll see it is all over Twitter. There's clips on it on Instagram. It's everywhere. So the argument continued to get more intense and intense. And all of a sudden, boom, he literally punches her in the face with all of his force. Like she is a grown ass man. He punches her multiple times in the face and the the son ends up coming into the store and shooting him. Apparently the son shot him several times to get him to fall back and that this man, this 32 year old man that was in the altercation with her ended up dying. Initially, they were charged with first degree murder, her and her son. But as of today, those charges have been dropped. My opinion on this situation is that I don't think she nor her son did anything wrong at all. I first of all, I have a huge, huge issue with men putting their hands on women. That's always been like a complete no no for me. Like I don't care what your excuse is as a man, you're naturally stronger and it's just not right for men to put their hands on women. So that's one. But two, not only did you put your hands on your woman, but you punched this woman multiple times with the full fucking force, like like with everything. Like you can tell he really intended to knock her ass out, as he said. And what pisses me off also about this situation, not only are you putting your hands on a woman, not only are you making threats, but the people in the store and around, I wish that something could have been done so the situation didn't escalate to what it ended up being. I just feel like when I first heard the the story before the charges were dropped, I was just like, damn, this is such a fucked up situation to be in. Like, I can't imagine being in that situation because it's just like jail and trying to defend your mom and trying to do what's right. Because me personally, if somebody was attacking my mom in the way that this man was attacking my mom it would take the force of god to get me off of them and that's just not my mom that's any one of my family members or anybody that i care about a lot like this man hit her with the full force like she he hit her like she was a grown-ass man her damn self so i don't feel like anything wrong was done i think that sometimes you invite certain things into your life and he invited this situation into his life when he decided to put his hands on somebody you don't know who anybody knows you don't know who could be where lurking around what corner. And that's why I always say I don't like getting in altercations with people in public because you never know how high that shit could escalate. I'm not saying that you should just um, be a pushover and let people run over you, but you have to be conscious of your surroundings at all times. And with his situation, it's just like you picked the wrong motherfucker to fuck with. And unfortunately, it's unfortunate that his life was lost, but I feel like he, he brought that on himself, honestly. And I'm grateful that the charges have been dropped against her and her son. And going forward, I just hope that they both get some therapy. I'm sure the situation is dramatic for the son. He's only 14 years old. And having that on his conscience, as well as just moving forward in life after dealing with something like that, I'm sure that it is extremely hard. And I'm hoping that everybody, you know, gets help and the healing that they need. All I can say is this is why you don't invite certain shit into your life and as a black woman, it's already just hard existing and feeling unprotected. And for this man to haul off on you in that manner, it's just fucked up and disrespectful. And I have no sympathy for what happened to him. I mean, you know, niggas die every day, B. But like, I just feel like if he would have just stopped it and not let it go that far, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So prayers out to everybody involved, you know, and it's just another example of just not acting a goddamn fool because the whole thing was uncalled for like he did not have to put his hands on that lady like that so that's where that's where y'all lost me so let's move on to the next thing i want to discuss my good sis cardi b and offset they're in the middle of some toxic ass shit once again so what happened was 
Cardi um, does Twitter spaces a lot. You know, the thing on Twitter, like kind of like Clubhouse, where you can get in there and talk and have conversations about stuff. On Twitter spaces, she spoke about if her and Offset were to get a divorce, that she would just upgrade and get a better nigga. And that's the honest truth. The opportunity for upgrade is always there. And she was just speaking what she knows to be a fact. But apparently this offended him. And he made a tweet saying, my wife fucked another nigga on me. And he made this tweet and then he ended up deleting it. And Cardi's response to the tweet, she made another space and like allowed people to come in and listen. And her response to the tweet was pretty much, uh, she started singing a Keisha Cole song. I should have che- cheated, which was fucking hilarious to me. She started singing, first of all, you can't accuse me of things you know that you are guilty of, Offset. And then she went on to say she has not fucked anybody that she's Cardi B and can't nobody just get to her or access her like that. Like, it's going to take a lot for her to sneak around and fuck a, fuck a random nigga. Like, Offset is really tripping and he's just mad and she don't have shit to say because that's not what went down. I thought it was hilarious that she responded that way. And I saw a picture. I'm not sure if the picture is valid or not, but on Twitter, a picture was floating around similar to when Offset cheated, he posted a picture and it said, I miss my granny. Allegedly, I don't know if the picture was real or if Cardi actually posted this, but she posted a picture that said, I miss my granny granny," and she was looking down. So it was funny and very petty. But so far as Offset and cheating, I do feel like them as a couple, they're kind of toxic. He has cheated on her and embarrassed her so many times that if she did decide to step out, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, you got to one up people sometime. You got to get even sometime. If she did cheat, it is what it is. Like, if anything, at this point, he needs her more than she needs him. So I'm going to stand by Cardi with this one. Like, nigga, if you mad, stay mad. Like, all I did is make a comment. So either you can get with it or get the fuck on, honestly. So another thing that's going on today is cash app is fucked apparently a lot of people with cash app cards were receiving double charges money being taken out of their accounts and things of that nature and the cash app customer service line has actually been down because they got an overwhelming amount of calls and people wondering what the fuck is going on with my account i personally am not really into cash app it's more i feel like a lot of people start with cash app then they upgrade to like zelle or apple pay or something but I don't really use cash up that much. I'm a Zelle girl all day, every day. I love Zelle because, you know, the money just be in there quickly. You don't have to worry about ridiculous fees. And I like how Zelle asks you many times, are you sure you want to send this money? Are you sure you want to give it to this person? Are you sure you know this person? They make sure you don't fuck up. And some of these other cash services, they don't really give a fuck if you fuck up. So I'm team Zelle. But if you have a cash app card, go check your account because it might be fucked. Another thing that I thought was a good story today, Chadwick Boseman finally received a star on the Walk of Fame. And with that, I feel like he should have gotten a star once Black Panther, the original, the first Black Panther came out because that movie made over a billion dollars. And I think it broke like a crazy record, like highest grossing film featuring actors of color ever. So that in itself was more than enough to get that star on the walk of fame the thing about the walk of fame is that i kind of hate how they take so long to give people their flowers like people that have had careers for decades and decades and decades and done all types of things and won all types of accolades some of those people should have been had a star on the walk of fame so i'm big on giving people their flowers while they're here and it would have been so nice for him to receive that honor while he was still here next let's roll it on into let me tell you something let's, let's tell you something so as you see if you're watching the recording i have on a pride themed shirt today happy pride month and i wanted to do for let me tell you something today since pride month it is pride month and it's coming to a close i had to had to do something for pride and i wanted to just discuss you know pride and what it means and like why it's important and why everybody should have pride so what i decided to do was ask several people what are their thoughts on pride what does pride mean to them and i'm going to insert those clips after I tell you guys what pride means to me, it was kind of, I kind of was shaky a little bit about discussing this, you know, because with me, it's like, if you know, you know, I just didn't want to be boxed in or I didn't want to be judged or put into a certain spot. Cause like when people know certain things about you, they're quick to box you in or put you in a certain position 
or just make it seem like this is all your is. There's so many layers to me. There's so many layers to people in general. And I just feel like there's not one way to exist. And there's not one way to have pride. With me, it kind of was like, do I want to go there? Or am I going to do it? Or am I going to do it? Ain't no half stepping with me, baby. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way. So that's why I was like, I'm going to make a special episode about pride. And I got comments from all types of people. I got comments from allies. I got I got comments from allies. I got comments from gay people, lesbians, bisexual people, queer people, all the scope of people. I got comments for about like what pride meant to them. So I'm excited to hear your, you guys' thoughts and even open up the conversation to talk about it. Whenever I post on my page on Instagram, I'm posting because I want the conversation. I want to talk about it. I want to build community in that way. So please feel free to comment on anything that I discuss or because I want to talk about it. So for me, pride means just being able to be yourself in whatever way that looks like. Like I said earlier, there's not one way to be anything and stepping into the fullness of who you are, no matter who it is you love, is a beautiful thing. And it's a thing that a lot of people struggle with doing. I mean, I've struggled with it as well, but once you get past that point where you're a hundred percent accepting of who you are and you don't give a fuck how other people may judge you or how other people may make you feel or try to box you in or put these ideas on you, that's what pride is about to me is stepping into the fullness of who you are and who you love, regardless of what a motherfucker got to say about you. And you know me, that's always what I'm going to be one of my principles, accepting yourself a hundred percent and leaning into who you are because we're all layers we all have so many layers and so many things about us that make us special and unique and having pride is stepping into all of that and loving that and embracing that no matter what anybody says you know coming forward and stepping out into who you are it's very hard you know you get a lot of backlash from friends sometimes from family obviously from people having opinions about you and your lifestyle and it's just it's a lot of shit to take on and that's why it's so important to celebrate that you're brave enough to step up and step out and live your truth in this world. So that is what pride means to me. And here are some clips from some other people that I asked what pride means to them. Okay, what is pride to me? Pride is fearlessness. Pride is happy. Pride is I can do battle by myself. (laughs) Pride is I will make noise in every room that I walk in. Pride is love, pride is family, pride is community. Um, But most importantly, pride is still evolving and growing. Um, I always struggle in the gay community with the whole idea of everyone being equal, regardless of whatever background you may come from or whatever pride color you may feel that you represent. But um, realistically, there's still a lot of division within the community itself. So I feel like it is getting better. I feel like there seems to be more of an appreciation for black culture, but when it comes to black and black queer people specifically, I still feel like we're overlooked. There's still a lot of things that they could make more accessible to us. However, at the same time, I'm happy to know that pride is being acknowledged by our community, the black community, in which they are starting to really just kind of create these spaces for us where it's more of a come one, come all to where everybody accepts it. But as far as pride overall, it is still evolving. It is still a beautiful thing. It is complex, but... It is something that I didn't choose, but pretty much felt. I felt gay my entire life. There was nothing I chose to want to do to be a part of this. This is what I felt like was me. So I feel like I'm trying to say I am pride. And um, I am what pride looks like. I am what pride looks like now. Pride is the past, the present, and the future. Pride to me means being comfortable in your own skin and not being afraid to show it off. It also means, you know, genuine love for yourself, enough to let yourself be, you know, who you're truly meant to be at your core. Pride to me is freedom. Pride to me is being unapologetically you, living life on your own terms, love with no limits, just doing 
basically anything you want to do. Um, yeah, pride is honestly just the whole embodiment of freedom and not giving any fucks whatsoever. To me, pride means just being comfortable with who you are and just owning whatever it is, no matter who you choose to love or who you choose to identify as, that you just really own it and it's you unapologetically. Okay, so pride to me means being authentically yourself and loving yourself radically, even through the hate you get, through what other people tell you you should think about yourself. Really just celebrating who you are, who you love, um, and not giving a fuck about what anybody else thinks. Pride means to me being able to embrace who you are as a person, your individuality, and your freedom to express yourself within the community. And also it means to celebrate the triumphs that we've had to overcome as a community and also allowing us a place to unite and to uplift each other, to encourage each other and having that safe space, but also showing others that don't have that safe space to come out that we are visible, we are here and we should be uplifted, we should be celebrated and we should be able to just not have to hide any parts of ourselves. And that's what pride means to me. So to me, pride is having the courage to be yourself, to be unapologetically you in a world where people aren't always welcoming and accepting of us. Um, pride is like the freedom to love who you love, be who you want without caring or worrying about what others think. Um, Pride's a reminder of what our community fought for to get us where we are now and the fight that continues on for our equality and our basic human rights, basically. Pride's freedom to love, it's the feeling of belonging, and most importantly, Pride is self-acceptance and realizing you matter. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed hearing that. I'm definitely open to come more conversations about this, be even beyond Pride Month, because I think it's something important to talk about. So let's go ahead and move on to my last segment, Kimspiration. And of course, my quote has to kind of do with the theme of Pride. And my quote is, you only have one life to live. So make your own rules and ignore all the people that tell you how to live your life. Life is too short to miss out on doing you. And just take that as your nugget. Think about it. Because it's true. Like, if you're going to be anything, be your motherfucking self. Be proud of yourself. Step into yourself. And do this shit your own way. And that wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Follow me on Instagram at the Kimber Shan Show. Follow the podcast page at a quickie pod. And, you know, give me some comments, subscribe, share. Let me know how you feel about the show or anything you have to say or anything I should add. I'm always open to learning more so I can improve this experience and make it the best it can be for you. Always remember my three principles. Love yourself, accept yourself, and respect yourself. Have a good one. Bye-bye.